Hi everybody! I hope you're all having a pleasant day. Um, my name is Diane and I'll tell you a little about myself. Uh, I am a 55 year old trans woman and I have been 19 months on my journey. Uh, I have been a registered nurse for 29 years and I have found that being able to practice the profession that I love as my true self has been more rewarding than I ever thought possible. Um, you may be wondering what this page is about, this channel is about. Well, it's about stained glass, because I'm about stained glass. Um, stained glass has been a passion of mine for like 20 years, and I've been prompted by a few people to do a YouTube channel, so I thought I'd give it a go. So, thanks for joining me, and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a stained glass set of angel wings. I call them remembrance wings. Um, people like them to remember loved ones or, you know, uh, when they pass, and I make a lot of these. So, without further ado, let's get it going, shall we? Now, in the interest of time, I have pre-foiled a lot of my glass, and I'm going to explain to you what that means. So, in the world of stained glass, you start with a sheet of glass, and you start with a pattern, like this one. You cut the pattern out. And this is how I do it. You cut the pattern out, you paste the pieces onto the glass, you use the glass cutters to cut those pieces out, and then you grind them on a wet grinder until they're nice and smooth, such as this piece right here. Once you have your pieces ground to the shape that you want them to be, it's time to foil them. And when I say foil them, I mean put a copper foil around the edge, and that copper foil is what will allow the solder to stick the pieces together, um, basically welding them together forever. And this is a 3 16 inch copper foil. It's a very common foil. I use 3M. I really like the 3M brand because it's got some real good sticky on it. And it just comes like, like a piece of tape. And so what you do is you peel your copper back a little bit. And you take your glass like this and you center the glass right on the piece of copper foil and you follow all the way around the edge trying to keep it in the center at all times which can be a little challenging so all the way around we go with that until we get right back to where we started. Which is just fine when you're doing foiling, but it's not good when you're lost in the woods. Now, once I had the foil on roughly like this, I fold it over a little tiny bit, all the way around the edge, just using my fingers. They do make tools for this as well, and some people may use them, but I just use my fingers. And then once I have it folded down, I take a roller, and I roll it nice and flat to the glass. It's important that you get your foil nice and flat to the glass, because you don't want any solder or uh, flux to get underneath of there. It'll get hot, it'll boil, and it will separate your foil from your glass and that makes for a very bad situation. I also like to go around the edge and get the foil nice and tight to the glass. It leaves a nice smooth edge, which looks really pretty once you get the project done. So, there's what a piece of glass looks like once it has the copper foil all the way around it, okay? So the next thing we do is I happen to have all the parts ready to go here, um, is we get them onto the pattern. So I'm assembling this piece actually upside down, the side that I want 
people to see when it's in the window is facing downwards right now. And there's a reason for that with this particular piece. This piece is comprised of two different colors of glass, a very white glass and a more of a tan kind of a glass. The tan glass is a little bit thicker than the white glass, and that's not uncommon in the world of stained glass. Um, so what I do is I, do, I construct it upside down, and then everything will be nice and flat and smooth on the front when I'm done. A method to my madness. Okay, so I have all my pieces in approximate location of what I need them to be. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get things um, lined up perfectly. Sometimes that can be a little challenging because no matter how precise you are with your grinding, it always seems like things you have to play with things a little bit to get it to fit. But before I do that, I need to put on some gloves. The reason I'm doing this is the flux is really greasy. The flux is the catalyst that you paint onto the copper. It allows the um, solder to stick to the copper because by nature solder does not like to stick to copper and this compensates for that. Also the solder that I use is a 60-40 blend. It's 60% um, tin and 40% lead and lead. We don't like lead so I wear gloves. I also must stress that you, if you do stained glass, you do it in a very well ventilated area um, because of the fumes. There's not a lot of fumes, but you don't want to be breathing in a ton of fumes. So now it's just a matter of getting everything lined up with precision so that both sides of the wings are symmetrical. It's very important, otherwise it looks lopsided in the window. And nobody likes angel wings that are lopsided, now do they? So, now that I've got the piece finagled into the proper position, I need to put a bit of gel flux in various locations here so that I can tack solder it together. Then I don't have to worry about it moving around so much. The gel flux that I use is Classic 100. It's a smokeless flux and it doesn't create a lot of fumes when you um, solder your parts together. And you use a brush and you just put little dabs in areas where you're going to put a drop of solder. I like to tack solder my pieces together first just in case I make a little bit of a boo-boo because you can remove a tack easy enough but if you put lay a bead of solder down it's very hard to separate the part once you've done that. These are things I've learned over the years. <laughs> I have two soldering irons I use. This is a detailing iron, which is smaller, and then I have a medium duty, which is a 100 watt Weller soldering iron, and I use that for more heavy duty applications. I have them both up and running at both at all times. Okay, let's get started. So we take our solder a little tiny bead on the end and we start just by finding a place to start. I'm going to start here at the tip of the wing and just lay down little tiny beads. Just little blobs of solder, just enough to hold it into position. Then I don't have to worry about it moving around on me. Like that. <laughs> These little parts can really squirm around on you so you got to just kind of be real careful. I'll gently push down on my pieces just so they're nice, nice and flat to the table as I solder as well. It doesn't take much to hold it together. There, 
that piece is going nowhere now. It's held together nicely. So I do the same thing for the other side. Now it's important that you keep the tip of your soldering iron clean. Um, a dirty tip can lead to some really bad solder joints. What I use to keep it clean is brass wool that I have in a little container here that you can't see. And what I do to clean it is I just run it into the brass wool until it comes out nice mirror shiny. And once again, we lay our little tiny drops of solder down to lock everything in place. And we have to readjust every now and then because you jostle things around, that's normal. It's part of the deal. All right, now we have both of our pieces tacked together and they're free to move about without getting jostled apart. So the next thing I will be doing is I'll basically slather the thing in flux because the next step will be to start bonding everything together with beads of solder. I use a bigger brush and I just hit all the copper surface with the flux. If you don't get enough flux on there, don't worry, you'll know because you'll go to put your solder down and it's not going to want to stick. So what do you do? You just put more, more flux on. And I move it around and I get it down inside the cracks as well because we want the solder to go down between the pieces as well to provide the best bond possible. We'll just go ahead and do the other one as well. Now I don't claim to be an expert in stained glass. I've just been doing it a long time. It's something I enjoy. Creation's always been uh, a form of serenity for me, especially when I'm doing it for other people, when I'm creating things for other people to enjoy, which is often the case. Other people may have other methods of doing their stained glass, and that's just fine. This is what works for me. If you decide you wanna do stained glass, you're going to do what works for you. Okay. So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the edge of the piece with some with solder, covering up every edge piece of the edge here. The reason I do that is because when I go to put my joint solder joints in, I'm going to be moving them towards the edge. And to go in later and put the edge soldering on messes those beautiful beads. So I do this in advance. Once again, this is just my method. Now as you move your soldering iron, over the foil. You'll hear a little bit of sizzling. That's normal. It's just that flux doing its job of catalyzing the solder to the copper. Now I have my entire edges of this side tin, meaning covered in solder. The next thing I'm going to do is start laying down the beads of solder that, that hold the piece together completely. For that I use my hotter soldering, soldering iron. The little one's good for detailed work and things that don't require a lot of heat, but the tip of that does not have a lot of mass and it loses its heat very quickly, where this one holds on to its heat for, for as long as you want. So for this I get my solder ready and down I go onto the project. And I just drag the soldering iron along, laying down beads of solder. 
I never spend too much time in any one spot because you can actually get too hot and then the solder will just melt right through to the other side. I like my beads to be just a little bit raised because then when you when you're done you polish this up with a compound and this these beads really shine. And I think that's important, especially in the angel wing, because I like that shiny, shiny finish. And now we move to the other side. Okay, both halves of our wings now, the back side is fairly well complete. So what happens next? Well, we do the front side. Flipping our little wings over and repeating the process. Now at this point, these wings are really hot, almost too hot to touch. Glass transmits heat very rapidly. If I was just working down here within a minute, you could feel the heat up here. So when I go on on this side to solder, I could probably use my smaller soldering iron because there's already a lot of heat build up, built up in the glass that retains the heat for a while. We'll see here. Once again, around the edges I go. All right, let's see if this is hot enough now for me to just use my detailing iron. If not, we'll switch back to the medium duty. Seems to be going pretty good so far. You'll know you're losing heat to your iron when it starts feeling sluggish as you pull it along. That means the tip can't keep up with the amount of heat required. And that's why if you're going to start stained glass, it's always wise to invest in at least the medium duty, but you'll find that having a detailing iron is a really wonderful thing to have. For people who ask me how they should get into stained glass, I say this. I started by taking a community ed class uh, where they had all the supplies and everything you need. Um, <clears throat> starting off doing stained glass is no small investment. Um, you can spend several hundred dollars just to get the basics you need to get started. So to see if you like it, it's often best just to go take a class and see um, if it's something that you might enjoy continuing to do. 
that's what I found. I found that once I did it, the class, I'm like, wow, this is great. I want to keep doing it. Um, the reason, why do I like stained glass? Like I said, creation is my serenity. It's a, it's a craft that requires all different kinds of skills. It's not just one thing, right? You have to choose glass. You have to create a pattern. I create a lot of my own patterns on my computer. Um, you have to cut the glass. You have to grind the glass. Um, you foil the glass, and then you solder the glass, and you finish the piece. There's a lot of components to it, so you never really get bored doing one thing. It's very fluid, and that's what I like about stained glass as far as a craft goes. Now this is the front of the piece, so I take a little bit more extra care on how good the beads look. Don't get me wrong, I want the back side to look good as well, because you never know where you're going to hang this. What if you hang this on your sliding glass door and outside there's a deck? You might see it from that direction as well. It might not just go in a window facing outside. So I put effort into both sides, but I put especially great effort into the front side. As the solder touches the tip of the iron, it becomes very molten and it sp spreads just like liquid glass. I just love that. And it's just so beautiful and shiny. Now there are ways to chemically treat your solder after the fact. They make a black patina and a copper patina. Um, both of those molecularly change the solder into their color. Um, I use those strategically for certain projects. However, for this one I go, I just leave it plain silver. I just burnish it very, very bright and shiny. And the reason for that is these are angel wings and every cloud has a silver lining. So why shouldn't angel wings as well? I just love the way these look in the window. They really pop because they're such a bright white. And the inner pieces here are that darker kind of a tan color and that's for a purpose. It adds a three-dimensional effect. Much like an angel wings cowl up and over, the darker glass gives it the appearance of a cowl. I'm just doing some touch-up work here. Making sure everything's nice and smooth. Sometimes the flux between the pieces will boil a bit and cause it to bubble up. So you have to go back in and just kind of fix those little areas. All right, both halves now have their solder on the faces. The next thing I do is I go and I put solder all the way around the edge. A lot of times there's drip from the doing the front side and the back side, so you don't have to add much solder. You can just go along like so and tin the edge. It also fills in the little cracks between each, each part of the feather of the wing. Now the solder will flow like water, so you always want to make sure that it's upright in the area that you're trying to tin. Otherwise it'll just run down the side like water on the, on the, on the roof. Fills in all those little gaps and just makes the wing look more fluid. I always check my piece to make sure I didn't miss any spots because if you don't get the solder on everything you'll have copper bear patches that don't match the rest of the project. Like right there. Now 
Okay, that looks good. All right, so the next thing we do is we're gonna assemble the piece, the two halves together. So we'll place them in our template, like so. And I use special pins. They're aluminum push pins. You don't want to use plastic because they will melt and wooey, do they stink. So you use these special aluminum push pins to hold everything in place. If you're wondering what the surface is I'm working with, it's basically a piece of um, acoustic ceiling tile that's been turned upside down. Uh, it's a very cost-effective surface to work on. It costs just dollars a sheet. It's flat, it's smooth, it's fire retardant, and when it gets too icky, you can just toss it and grab another new one from your favorite hardware store. Menards is where I get mine. Okay, our piece has been pinned into position so it won't move around. So now I tack perfectly between both pieces to lock them together. And that's much just like when I started tacking this together. Right now I'm just filling in that gap between the two pieces real well, so they're well bonded together. And then I will build up the joint a little bit higher so it's nice and smooth looking like that. Now we can get rid of our pins because these are hooked together for good. Bonded together forever, our best friends. And we do the same thing to the back side. So now our piece is complete, except it's got to hang in a window. So in order to do that, I have to put two little eyelets at the top and a piece of chain. That'll hang from a suction cup with a hook on it. The chain I will be using is a silver chain because I want it to match the finish on the, of the solder. And to make the little loops, what I do is I take 16 gauge wire I go through a lot of this and it's just the simple act of wrapping the wire around I use my brush just like that and then we come in with our snips And what we end up with is a perfect little circle. So for this particular piece, I use about 15 links. That's just what I've decided. And 15 comes to be about right there. And we have our little piece of chain and two little circles of wire. I affix a circle onto each end of the chain
And now we have the tiniest piece of logging chain there ever was. <laughs> So once again now, I make sure that my piece is centered on my pattern because I have two little marks on my pattern that show me where the eyelets are supposed to go to keep them even. So I'm going to pin my piece again so it doesn't move around on me. And then I get a grip on the, one of the rings with my needle nose pliers. And I come into position, get it centered. And using the existing solder that's already there, I affix it to the piece. Then I come in on the other side and I do the exact same thing all over again. And I look down upon the project as I'm doing it to make sure that the eyelets are equal. Now, if I need to add a little bit of solder just to beef it up a bit, I will. And this one I will. So we've completed our project and I'm so happy that you joined me for this segment, my first one in my new channel. Um, this is the Remembrance Wings. And I think they're just gorgeous. These are very popular. I hope to do more segments in the future. Um, I hope you found this interesting. If you do, feel, feel free to follow me on this page. Um, if you are interested in my life, feel free to take a look at my Facebook page. Um, it's basically uh, the journal of my transition. Um, until we meet again, my catchphrase is always to remember to be beautiful. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye-bye.